Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. I'm Anton, and today I'll be reviewing Maker Geek's Rapture series PLA. This will get explosive, so let's get to it. If you haven't seen my previous review on Maker Geek's flexible filaments, then you might not know they're a US based company that makes really affordable filament. Their Rapture Series PLA has some very cool properties. It's extra strong like Eason's PLA Plus, but it also has a higher temperature resistance. Maker Geeks claims this filament is much stronger than PLA, ABS, and many nylons, and that it can withstand temperatures of up to 125 degrees Celsius without deformation. This is very useful because parts printed with this filament won't become malleable in higher temperatures. And it also makes it dishwasher and food safe. What's even more awesome to me is that this filament is half the price of the competitors. But how well does it stack up? Well, to make filaments more affordable, instead of being individually boxed, it just comes inside a vacuum sealed resealable bag. This is actually very cool because you won't need to buy Ziploc bags. The spool is also very basic. It has a small label indicating the material and recommended print temperature. It's also pitch black so there's no way of knowing when you're running out of filament. Also it has only one spot to hold the filament, which is never enough, but can be fixed by drilling the holes yourself. The winding was more consistent this time, and won't be a problem. The filament itself is very smooth and has a consistent diameter. In contrast to regular PLA, this filament is very hard to break, even if you bend it and twist it quite a lot. As always, I printed my three usual test designs, a calibration cube, a Marvin, and a 3D Benchy. Using an E3D V6 at a point to a layer height, I found 215 degrees to be a great printing temperature, and hairspray on glass with or without a heated bed great for adhesion, yet this may vary for you. The calibration cube turned out just perfect. All corners and letters were well defined. Same story with the Marvin. All curves seemed pretty smooth and even the overhangs came out great. The 3D Benchy was also perfect. All overhangs, bridging, corners and curves were printed very nicely with no noticeable imperfections. But before getting this results, I did have a couple of failed prints as this is the first filament that starts slipping on my extruder. It turns out that you need to make sure that the extruder is very tight when printing with this filament. Knowing about the strength and durability I could get out of this filament, I went on and printed a GoPro case, zip ties, a resistor forming tool, and well, a Pokemon. This GoPro case is much thinner and lighter than the usual hard shell that comes with a GoPro. The zip ties were designed by Devon from the Make Anything YouTube channel and might come in handy at any time. The resistor forming tool is awesome to shape resistors into the right length for a breadboard or PCB. And this low poly syndic wheel is just cute. Plus, it looks as if it was inspired by Flowalistic's collection. All this print will be benefited by being stronger and heat resistant. Yet, to achieve these two characteristics, you need to anneal the prints. To do this, you need to bake the prints in an oven for 10 minutes at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. After doing this, there might be some very light shrinkage so you might want to take this into consideration when designing your prints. After this, I found myself wondering how to take this filament to its limits. Okay, so that watermelon got completely destroyed, guys. I mean, it was all over the field. So to actually know if annealing it makes it stronger, I made two batches of Marvin's calibration cubes and 3D Benchies. So I'm gonna blow up a cracker next to these and then I'm gonna blow up another cracker next to these and see how they get affected. Let's go. Oh, and I also have this Pokemon. Let's see if it survives. Hey guys, so there are prints everywhere around here and I just need to find them now. Thank God I marked them before I exploded them so I know which ones are the ones that are annealed and which are the ones that are not annealed. So let's get to it. And here are the results. Let's start off with the prints without annealing. And well, this is all that's left from the calibration cube, which got blown up into hundreds of pieces. 
As for the 3D Benchy, you can see how the explosion blew off the front and top into many pieces where the explosion hit the hardest. Impressively, the Marvin survived basically intact, probably due to the fact that its round shape makes it stronger. But nothing compares to these. All these prints were annealed, and all these prints survived almost intact. Only the 3D Benchy got the top foam off, but only into a single piece that can be glued back together. The Calibration Cube, the Marvin, and the Syndical were not damaged at all. I still can't believe this filament handles such explosions. I mean, some of them were so strong, the prints flew 30 meters in the air, hit a wall, and still managed to survive intact. This is way beyond my expectations for a filament that's just over 30 bucks. I will definitely get more of this filament and so should you. Feel free to use this code to get 10% off and free shipping inside the US when buying at MakerGeek's website, which I'll link down below along with all the prints I featured in this video. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to support my channel through Patreon or by buying a cool t-shirt like this one in my merch store. If not, liking and subscribing would also make my day. You might also want to check out that video. Again guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.